This is Max, Max Headroom. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever produced, namely the Max Headroom Strength Story. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, let's get into it. If I was gonna pick a mascot to represent the 80s, it would be Max Hedrick. Max was everything the 80s stood for, the good and the bad, and it all started on April 4th, 1985, with a movie called Max Hedrick, 20 minutes in the future. Background stuff, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Followed by the Max Headroom show, then there was Max Headroom, which was also a show, but it was based off a movie. Then there was a video game. Then there was another show called the original Talking Max Headroom show on Cinemax, but that was actually season four of the other show. And then there was the Max Headroom show, but it was more of a talk show with a live audience and guests, but that was actually the second season of the Max Headroom show. Mind you, that was all inside of a three-year period. You made them, you but, made you know, the 80s. Me up the, whining, the begging, okay, okay, so you finally made it on my show. What do you want to know? Go ahead, ask me. Later. How rich are you? My first memory of Max Headroom is from the show on ABC called Max Headroom. Not to be confused with the Max Headroom show, which aired in Britain in... You know what? Forget it. The point is, Max Headroom was everywhere and he seemed to come out of nowhere, which helped add to the strange mystique of this computer-generated talk show host, which he wasn't. But back then, it was really hard to tell. It was the 80s, and computers were just starting to really take over. Max Headroom popped up at the perfect time, right when people were getting both excited and nervous about computers and what the future held, and Max was there to lead us all into the future. As a kid, I honestly had no idea if Max was created in a computer or not. His strange look, stutter, and odd presence made you second-guess yourself. And that was all done on purpose. The creators wanted you to question it. But in reality, Max was played by an actor named Matt Frewer. You might know him from some other things. So do nothing and thousands will die. Do something and millions could die. That's a tough choice. The insanity started in Britain. But once Max hit the USA, it was like a giant wave. What I remember Max most from was the Coke commercials. Is this a private party or can any store crash? So, no, 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 it is irresistible. This is more modern than that. You said the P word. So, what I want to know is if you're drinking Coke, who's drinking Pepsi? If you can't beat it, that's the way. Coca. The cola wars were raging at the time, and Max was on the Coca-Cola side. Those commercials were everywhere. After every cartoon, sitcom, the Super Bowl, presidential debates, Max was in your living room 20 to 30 times a day, and everybody was mesmerized by him. Then he started appearing on late night talk shows like Letterman. They'd wheel out a TV and he'd give an interview. And again, this was mind blowing at the time because he seemed to react like he could see through the monitor. Even on his own show, he would do interviews from a monitor. It was very surreal. And let's not forget all the marketing. There were pins, watches, t-shirts, Halloween costumes. He was all over magazines. There were skateboards, cards, ventriloquist dummies. <laughs> it's creepy. Lunchboxes, books, music videos, sunglasses. His own candy. Those weird finger puppet things that everybody had in the 80s. His own Christmas album. Then there were the parodies. You had Vinny from Spaceballs, the 80s cafe in Back to the Future 2. Where it's always morning in America, even in the afternoon and noon. The Pixel movie. Oh well, well, look who's here. Cubert the traitor. Steve Urkel had a Max Headroom version of himself. The Muppets. The creepy as all hell Max Headroom incident. Holy nightmare fuel. And someone using sophisticated equipment managed to briefly and illegally override broadcast signals. I still have nightmares about that. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? There was even a port. Uh, yikes. 
It's fun to think back and remember how big Max Headroom was, and what an influence he had on things. Max kinda reminds me of someone. Plus, of course, my own special brand of modesty. What? Don't touch that dial, Mary Tyler Moore! No, 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 I think somebody was a big Max Headroom fan. Uh, so I became a comic. I mean, Neil Young sang about him. Eminem's video Rap God is a parody of Max Headroom. And for good reason. Because Max Headroom was supposed to be mocking the exact thing he became. The background story provided for Max Headroom's character was rooted in a dystopian near future where people are obsessed with television and material possessions and large corporations rule the world. So you know, basically, now. Uh, Blipvert, Max Headroom, was over the entranceway of every car park in the UK. That's where his name came from. Instant recognition. Max Headroom was such a weird phenomenon. I mean, not for the 80s, because the 80s were full of weird marketing phenomenon. But Max Headroom was real, real weird. Like a cocaine, sugar, caffeine-fueled 80s fever dream kind of weird. And almost just as quickly as he appeared, he was gone put into an old shoebox with the California Raisins, Roger Rabbit, Garbage Pail Kids, Mr. T, and all the other 80s memories. Max Headroom was ahead of his time, a dystopian, computer-generated warning from the future. A warning we all missed. And now, we are all Max Headroom. Thanks for backpedaling with me. I'm Max, and you are... Well, that's just about it. So, so, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon. <laughs>